Hey, everybody. Hey, I'm Anton Timms, and I'm just here to share some encouragement for your summer reading kits activity. I'm so proud of you that you took this leap to read some books for this summer. Um, it's going to be a fun, jam-packed summer, but take some time to also discover and be curious. You know, I didn't love reading. It wasn't my favorite thing to do because the books I saw in the classroom didn't always have characters that portrayed people who looked like me in a bright light. And so I had to go outside of the classroom to go online or to go to the library and find books with strong characters that represented a message that I cared about and really represented my ancestors and my family and people who look like me in a good light. And so I really encourage you to do that. And if I had one piece of advice I would give you, it would be to really do your best. It's okay if you don't get through the entire book. It's okay if you put the book down and you don't pick it up for a couple of days. I mean, it's okay if you forget your bookmark and you forget where you left off at. Um, reading things several times sometimes helps me to discover new ideas and new things that I didn't know about the characters and that I didn't know about myself. And so I really want to congratulate you for not just um, opening the book and closing it, but, but also checking out these videos. So I'm so proud of you. Thank you to the moms and the parents and the caretakers out there for supporting your youth and diving into literacy. And it doesn't stop here. Learning is something that happens for the rest of your life. And learning also happens outside of the classroom, just as much as inside of the classroom. And so I encourage you to go through all three of those books and share with your family members, your friends, all the things you're learning. So please have a great rest of your day. And thank you so much for participating in this activity. Have a great summer. Hi, everyone. I'm Flannery. And with permission from United Way Bay Area, I'm going to talk about why I love reading and how I kind of had a hard start. So when I was little, it took me a long time to learn how to read. I couldn't really sit still. I didn't understand the letters and how the sounds fit together. And I felt slow and dumb. And like, I didn't want to keep going because I just didn't understand like some of the other kids could. Also, at the same time, when I was learning how to read, my parents got divorced. And there were some other things going on in the home and it just made it a little more difficult. So what really helped me to get over that was to, first of all, to keep asking for help. And because I really wanted to read Harry Potter, I really wanted to read about different worlds where magic happened and the possibilities were endless. And you could go into the minds and hearts of these different characters and get to experience a new world and just imagine what it was like to be there yourself. And through learning how to read and getting curious and asking for help, I, also led to me wanting to write my own stories. And so now that I'm bigger, I do write my own stories. And now that I know how to read, I get to read them to my friends and family. And I get to talk to other people like you of what can you do to feel good about reading, to have fun in the process, and to learn more about the world around you. And especially with these stories, these are real. And these are about kids and friends and families that are just like yours, even though they might look a little different. And that's one of the, my favorite things about how I learned how to read. So I hope that hearing a little bit about my story might be inspiring to you to learn how to read and that you continue to ask for help, explore new worlds, feel your imagination, creativity, and to just give it a try. Okay, bye. Hey there, my name is Patrick and this is my mom, Fung. Hello everyone. Today I wanna to talk to you about this amazing book called Inside Out and Back Again by Tan Ha Lai. This book holds a very special place in my heart because it tells the story of a young girl very similar to my mom. Both my mom and the main character of this book immigrate from Vietnam to the U.S. at a very young age during the time of the Vietnam War. And I specifically remember growing up hearing stories about how my mom traveled across the seas by boat to the U.S. and how she had to learn English for the first time when she arrived here. And now this book tells a very similar story. Not only did picking up this book help me learn how to be a better reader, 
but it also helped me learn more about my mom's journey as an immigrant and more about my Vietnamese culture. Now, when I first went to school, my English wasn't perfect and the foods I ate for lunch didn't look like the lunches the other kids had. And sometimes I was the only Vietnamese student in my class. But reading this book reminded me about how special it is to come from a Vietnamese family with a very unique culture and how thankful I am to have a mom that sacrificed so much for us to have a beautiful life here in the U.S. Now, Maya, do you have any advice for our young readers? Uh, yes. You know, I came to U.S. Um, I spoke very little English, but don't be shy and embarrassed because when you first learning to read or speak a second language, it will be hard at first, but keep learning, be strong and stay happy and you can achieve your bigger dream. Thank you, man. That's great advice. So with that, we really hope you check out this book and have fun reading it this summer. Good luck and take care. Goodbye. Take care, everyone. Stay healthy. Hello, my name is Jai Huang and I live in Concord, California. Today, I want to share a book with you. The book is called A Different Pond by Bao Fi. I'm going to read you the beginning of this book. Dad wakes me quietly so mom can keep sleeping. It will be hours before the sun comes up. In the kitchen, the bare bulb is burning. Dad has been up for a while, making sandwiches and packing the car. Can I help? I ask. Sure, my dad whispers and hands me the tackle box. The street lights look brighter and the roads aren't so busy before the sun comes up. Dad turns on the heater and tells me stories. A kid at my school said my dad's English sounds like a thick, dirty river. But to me, his English sounds like gentle rain. And that's the beginning of this book. I chose this book because it spoke to me on a personal level. Even though it depicts a different culture than my Chinese heritage, I can definitely relate to the experience that a dad's going through. When I first came to the U.S. as an immigrant at 15 years old, I barely spoke the language. I had a lot of obstacles as a foreign kid, and a lot of kids made fun of me. Some of those were pretty racist jokes. I tried to learn the language, but it wasn't easy. I did a lot of reading. I watched TV and I practiced speaking the language daily to other folks. Eventually, I was able to learn the language and succeed in school, but it was definitely not an easy journey. If you're an immigrant, or if you're learning a second language, or if you're just wanting to learn a different story that someone else is living through, I really would recommend you this book. And to those folks out there who are going through this experience, I wanna tell you that Keep going and nothing can stop you from becoming who you can be. In Chinese, there's a proverb that says, Du wan zhen shu, xin wan li lu. Meaning if you read 10,000 books, you can walk 10,000 miles. Reading will take you far and give this book a try. Thank you. Hi, my name is Jody and I am half Chinese and half white. And um, being mixed race, this is one of my favorite children's books because it really talks about how to love oneself, to love yourself for being different, that even if you don't look like your friends or look like the people around you, to love yourself because you look like your mom, you look like your grandma, you look like your little sister, you look different, but you are beautiful all the same. And this is about a little Chinese girl who is embracing herself and really focuses on her eyes. And it's called Eyes That Kiss in the Corners by Joanne Ho. And I'd like to just read you a short excerpt from it. Some people have eyes like sapphire lagoons with lashes like lace trim on ball gowns, sweeping their cheeks as they twirl Big eyes, long lashes, not me. 
I have eyes that kiss in the corners and glow like warm tea. My eyes are just like mama's. Mama's eyes that kiss in the corners and glow like warm tea crinkle into crescent moons when she comes home from work. She scoops me up in her arms, eyes sparkling like starlight and tickles me until we laugh ourselves onto the floor. When mama tucks me in at night, her eyes tell me that I am a miracle. In those moments when she's all mine, flecks of dancing gold tell me I am hers too. So this book just really speaks to me and I love it because it just goes on to just really showing how important it is to be different and to love yourself. And I love it. So I hope that you check it out. Thanks. Hi everyone. My name is Tiffen. I live in San Francisco and I'm really excited to be here today. Um, today I'd like to read an excerpt from this book, The Name Jar. I really enjoyed this book and hope you'll follow along with me. Um, I'm going to start on page eight, which is the page um, with this picture of Unhe speaking with her mom after her first day at school in America. On the bus home, nobody teased her, but Unhe kept thinking about her name. How was school, Unhe? her mother asked when she walked in. Did you understand the teacher? Unhe simply nodded. She unpacked her school bag and set the red pouch by a photograph of her grandma. I'm glad you are learning English well, her mother said. You must study hard, behave nicely, and get good grades to show that you're a good Korean. I will, replied Unhe. But, but I think I would like my own American name, she said quickly. Her mother looked at her with surprise. Why? Unhe is a beautiful name. Your grandma and I went to a name master for it. But it's so hard to pronounce, Unhe complained. I don't want to be different from all the American kids. You are different, Unhe, her mother said. That's a good thing. Unhe just wrinkled her nose. I'll stop here for today, but I do hope that you will continue to read this book as it has a great message. Um, I can relate to Unhe in many ways. My name, Tiffen, is one that you probably have not heard before. It is a French name because my father was born and raised in France and wanted his children to have French names. While I luckily have not been teased for my name, I have been in many situations where a teacher or a classmate mispronounces my name or doesn't address me by name because they're afraid of getting it wrong. If you can relate to this as well, I hope that you know your name does make you unique and special and you should be proud of it. I personally think that my name defines a lot of who I am and I wouldn't be the same person with a different name. And if you don't relate to this story as much and your name is a bit easier to pronounce, I hope that the next time you meet someone with a name you don't know how to say, you'll take a moment and ask them how they pronounce it. Thanks everyone and happy summer reading. Hi, my name is Maron and I live in Austin, Texas. And I'm so excited to share with you my love for reading. Today, I'm going to read a little bit from this book called P Please, Baby, Please by Spike Lee and Tanya Lee Lewis. It has beautiful pictures and I can't wait to show you them. Let's look at page two. It says, go back to bed, baby, please, baby, please. Not on your head. Baby, 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 please. Keep off the wall. Baby, baby, please, baby. You share that ball. Please, baby, baby, baby. Don't eat the sand, 
Baby, 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 please. Now, hold my hand. Baby, baby, please, baby. Now, this book shows us all about a regular day in life and listening to your parents while also having fun and playing. I hope you'll do a lot more reading this summer and I am so excited for all the things you'll learn. Until next time, have fun, take care, bye. I'm going to be reading Dream Big Little One by Vashti Harrison. I'm reading this with permission from United Way Bay Area. Dream big, little one. Dream big, little one. There's so much you can do. Just look at all the leaders who came before you. Reach for the stars, like May, Bessie, and Catherine. May Jemison went all the way to space. Bessie Coleman flew her airplane high. And Catherine Johnson helped send a man to the moon. Be bold like Josephine, Shirley, and Maya. Josephine Baker was a singer, dancer, and a spy. Shirley Chisholm ran for president. Maya Angelou used her voice every way that she could. Or you can go the distance like Wilma, Raven, and Florence. Wilma Rudolph couldn't walk, but learned to run. Raven Wilkinson danced all around the world. And Florence Joyner, or Flojo, she was the fastest woman of all time. Find your stage like Ella, Nina, Oprah, Gwen, and Nichelle. Ella Fitzgerald, she was the first lady of jazz. Nina Simone had a style all her own. Oprah Winfrey shined her light on others. Gwen Ifill reported the truth. And Nichelle Nichols trekked through the stars on TV. Express your creativity like Alma Augusta, Octavia, and Julie. Alma Woodsy Thomas painted her whole life and became a star at 80. Augusta Savage sculpted toys when she had none. And Octavia Butler created magical worlds with her writing. Julie Dash shared untold stories in the movies she made. Wherever you go, whatever you do, be bold and dream big because the world is waiting for you. Thank you. I hope this book inspired you and I hope you take care. Hi everyone, my name is Rachel. I'm from San Jose and I'm so excited to get to share with you my love for reading today for our United Way Bay Area Summer Reading Kit Book Drive. So the book that I have today for you is called The Bells by Danielle Clayton. This is what the cover looks like. This is one of our books for teens and older readers, so most likely if you're a younger reader, you can look forward to reading this later or with a sibling. And this book is surrounding a fantasy world in which there are these being called The Bells and it focuses on beauty and the beauty inside all of us um, with a lot of other things as well. It's very exciting and it's a very adventurous book and I highly recommend reading it and hopefully this gets you a little bit excited about our summer reading book drive and all of the books that you can then look forward to reading as well besides this one. So today I'm going to read to you an excerpt just of the first couple pages um, and hopefully you like it. Alrighty, let's get started. So in chapter one, this is the very beginning of the book. We all turned 16 today. For any normal girl, that would mean raspberry and lemon macarons and tiny pastel blimps and pink champagne and card games. Maybe even a teacup element. But not for us. Today is our debut. There are only six of us this year. My fingertips leave fog teardrops on the paper-thin glass walls. The carriage is beautiful and clear and fashioned into a ball. I am a delicate doll poised inside a snow globe. 
An adoring audience surrounds my carriage, eager to see what I look like and what I can do. A net made of my signature pink flower stretches along the glass curves in order to tell everyone my name, Camellia, and to hide me until I am revealed in the royal court. I am the last in line. My heart races with excited nervousness as we snake through the crowds in the royal square at the Butte Carnival. The festival happens once every three years. I peer through the tiny spaces between the petals with a pair of eye scopes. I try to soak in my first glances of the world, waiting to fold up each bit and tuck it into the cerise layers of my dress. It's a wonderful land of palace buildings and golden turrets and glittering arches, fountains full of crimson and ivory fish, topiary mazes, clipped trees, shrubs, and bushes in every possible geometric shape. Imperial canals circle the square, holding jeweled boats bright as gemstones and shaped like smiling moons on midnight blue water. They spill over with passengers eager to watch us. The royal hourglass that measures the length of day and night churns with sand the color of white diamonds. The sky and its clouds are made of melting cherries and flaming oranges and burnt grapefruit as the sun sinks into the sea. The dying sunlight flashes my own reflection on the glass. My powdered skin makes me look like an overly frosted piece of caramel cake. I've never seen anything like it before. This is the first time I visited the Imperial Island and the first time I've ever left home. So that is the first two pages of The Bells by Danielle Clayton. And again, I cannot wait to hear the rest and I cannot wait for you all to enjoy the rest of this book just as I did when I read it. Thank you for following along with me and I hope you have a great rest of your day and a great time reading this summer. Bye guys. Bye. My name is Dominique and I live in Salem, Massachusetts, and I am so, so happy to take a few minutes today to share with you my love for reading. Yay. So learning to read can be difficult and learning to enjoy it can be even harder. I have that experience myself. So when I was younger, I thought that I hated reading, actually. Every time I picked up a book, I would either fall asleep or I'd find myself reading an entire page but have literally no memory of what I just read. And it actually took me years to figure out it was because I was uninterested in the books I was told to read, not that I didn't like reading. I actually really love reading. Um, these books didn't have stories or characters that related to my experience, but once I found the right books, I can promise you that I did fall in love with reading too. I know that as black and indigenous youth and other young people of color, it can be really hard to find books that you also like. Books with characters that look like you, that have the same facial features, hair texture, and color as your skin. But luckily, your reading list has so many great stories with diverse characters. Ones I wish I had or knew about when I was your age. In fact, I'm so excited about your reading list that I actually decided to catch up on some reading too. And I want to share an excerpt from my favorite book on the list, which is From the Desk of Zoe Washington. Now, before I begin, part of the reason I chose this book, honestly, is because I have the same last name as the character and some of the same experiences too, which I find so cool and something that I missed out on at your age, but I'm so glad I get to catch up now. So here we go. I shut my bedroom door and opened the envelope. The paper inside was a piece of loose leaf, like what mom would buy to put into my school binders. The words filling the page were written in the same blue handwriting from the front of the envelope, except the print wasn't as neat. I stood in the middle of my bedroom and read the letter from start to finish, and then I read it again. Everything was quiet except for my heartbeat echoing in my eardrums. To my little tomato. Happy birthday. I can't believe you're 12 years old. Wow. Do I sound like a broken record when I say that you're growing up so fast? Do you even know what a broken record is? Everybody used to listen to CDs when I was growing up, but my dad, your grandpa, kept a record player in the corner of the living room. He always says that music sounds better coming from a record player. He might be right. His favorite singer is Stevie Wonder. Have you ever heard of any of his songs? He has a pretty great voice. There's this one song called isn't she lovely? <laughs> you should look it up sometime. Stevie says, Stevie's saying exactly how I feel about you, my baby girl. Well, you're not a baby anymore, but I know you've got to be pretty lovely at this age. I wish I could give you a hug and see your smiling face on your big day. I'm sorry I can't be there to celebrate with you. I know your mom is doing something special. Special. She was always good at knowing how to celebrate birthdays when we were younger, when we were together, excuse me. Even, even if you never reply to these letters, I'll keep writing them. 
Though I hope you'll write me back one day, in the meantime, I want you to know that I think about you every day. Love, Daddy. Okay, I love that excerpt. And I don't want to spoil too much, but I hope you're as excited about this reading list as I am. And I know if you don't already love reading, that you will. You know, and you'll love it as much as I do one day. And nobody's perfect. As you notice, I messed up some words. I couldn't read correctly, but you just keep on going and it becomes like second nature. All it takes is a little encouragement, some patience, and of course, a great story. I know you can do it. Good luck. Hi everyone, my name is Gina Kim. I'm from Washington DC and I'm so excited to share with you a little bit about why I love reading. Um, I've always loved reading since I was a child. My um, brother will tell you that I always had a book in my hand and the reason that I did was because for me, reading was like watching TV. It was a way to learn about people's stories, to learn about different places and worlds I could explore. And some of the, my favorite books were about reading stories about people who had different experiences. And one of those books was Esperanza Rising, which is I know on your list of books you might get sent. Um, Esperanza Rising tells the story of a girl who comes to live in America and her family is migrant workers on a farm. Um, and this was an experience I had lived. I loved hearing how Esperanza navigated some of the things that I felt I was navigating, like being an, a child of immigrants, being able to kind of exist in both cultures. And I think books are a great way to explore what might be real for you in the eyes of someone else and really getting to understand people from a different perspective through something as special as a story. So I'm so excited for y'all to to start and embark on your reading journeys. Um, and I just wanted to say that I know it's not easy. Um, as someone who learned to read Spanish and Korean later in life, it's really, really hard to read in a different language, um, especially because some things just don't translate literally. And I wanna say that I encourage you all to try because reading is so special in any language and being able to read in multiple languages means that you can experience stories on a different level from all kinds of cultures and perspectives. And that's such a rich way to live. Um, I wanna leave you with one of my favorite poems from a Korean American author named Ji Yun Yoon. And it's called, I Re Revisit Myself in 1996. English has just begun to bruise my tongue, but I am all Korean. I am five. I live in California on Washington Street, so I think I live in Washington State and dream of California weather all sun all the time, except at night when God throws stars like darts and punctures the ground sometimes. It's a short excerpt, but I just wanted to encourage you that even if English feels foreign and awkward now, that at some point you might even write your own stories in that language or a different language. And I am so excited to hear about all of your exciting adventures and all of your exciting reading possibilities. And if you have something I should be reading, please let me know. Um, but I hope that reading is as special to you as it is to me. Bye. Hi, my name is Esther, and I'm excited to share an excerpt from Charlie Hernandez in the League of Shadows from Virginia, which is um, on the opposite side of the country from California. Um, the excerpt that I've chosen is um, on page 20, so uh, very early in the book, and um, it's about a paragraph down into the page. Hey, check it out! shouted a voice behind me. It's Barney, the dorky dinosaur. I turned, surprised, and saw Alice Coulter standing behind me. Her army of lady jocks gathered around her. Alice was a six-foot-tall, fastball-crushing, all-state softball player who looked like she belonged in the majors. She had thick tree trunk legs, forearms like pythons, and biceps that were the envy of the boys' varsity football team. Her softball jersey and cleats were always spotless. Her dark brownish hair was cropped close to her head in a faux hawk, the tips frosted blue for a little extra school spirit. Her pirate-inspired crossbones nose ring glinted dully in the overhead lights. In third grade, she'd earned the nickname Alice the Terrible after pegging one of our PE teachers with a 50 mile per hour curveball and then proceeding to strike him out in front of the entire class. Mr. Plummer, who was also our school's basketball coach, was never again seen on school property. Hello, boys and girls. I'm a big purple loser, Alice said, doing her best Barney imp impersonation. 
And big surprise, her gang of morons burst out laughing. One of them shouted, burn, right in my face. Another one, the starting catcher, I'm pretty sure, shoved me into the water fountain with a shiny black mitt while popping a bubble of gum between her teeth. I looked around for a hall monitor, nada, which was the problem with hall monitors. They were never around when you needed them. Alice gave me a big wicked grin. Honestly, is dressing like that considered cool wherever it is you're really from? I'm from here, I reminded her for what felt like the zillionth time. This whole thing started back in first grade when we did partners for a cultural heritage project and she learned that I was born in Puebla, Mexico. My dad's family is Mexican and Portuguese and my mom is Cuban. I tried to explain to her that my parents had moved here when I was only one. So America was the only country I'd ever called home, but she didn't seem to get that. It sucked that some people would never accept me just based on my parents' nationalities and the color of my skin. Sure you are, I say, Allison's keys narrowed. Then she stepped forward and snatched my mom's locket out of my hands before I could react. So I chose this, uh, this passage for a couple of reasons. One, um, I think it, I think it really shows you that, you know, through words, you could describe a person and really create like this image in your head of, of what this person looks like and what this character is like. Um, you don't have to like see a picture of Alice to imagine, you know, she's just like not very nice human who, you know, pushes around other people at school who are a little bit smaller than she is maybe. Um, and she's basically a bully. So, uh, through words, you, you learn about this, this character and, um, from the very beginning, uh, you, you start to form some impressions. Um, so that was, that's one. And then the other reason why I chose this, um, is because it really made me think of something that my dad used to say, which is check on Kirita. So that's Korean and it translates to the idea that within books, um, there are sort of pathways. Um, I think he might have meant that somewhat literally uh, growing up. Um, my parents really valued education. And um, since we didn't speak English at home, uh, it was through books that um, my sister and I formed our understanding of America and um, it's how we learned English. Um, but the the other subtext or meaning to that phrase, check um, anekirita, is that it opens up you know, other worlds and, and um, other people's experiences for you. And so on chap uh, you know, on page 21, when um, Charlie talks about how this is the only home that he's known, but um, people will look at him and immediately, you know, identify him as being different. Um, I think that's true for a lot of people. Like you don't have to be, um, like a Latino, um, you don't have to be Mexican growing up in the United States to, to experience this. Um, I know I have definitely experienced this. And so reading this excerpt, it reminds me that, um, one of the, one of the great things about, um, reading and reading about other people's stories is that, um, you learn about how their stories are different from your own. Um, but you also learn about how the human experience um, can be can be the same, uh, even if you're you're not from the same culture. Um, and so I think reading teaches you empathy. It teaches you um, how to think about things from another person's point of view. Um, and so I hope you know you'll read the rest of the book uh, and. and um, and enjoy the stories about uh, Latino and Hispanic mythology because um, what's interesting about myths is that uh, there are a lot of aspects that'll um, sort of crop up in, in different cultures. Um, you know, and they, they teach you a lot about different uh, culture um, and, and different um, people and what they believe. Um, so 
and as you as you read it, I hope you'll like imagine the characters and picture them in your head. What are they like? Who are these people? Um, and then also um, empathize a little bit uh, with the experience, right? Like, what is it like to meet a skeleton? What is it like, um, you know, to to go to school and then worry that um, someone's going to ask you to remove an oven mitt? Um, and then think about how this is like your day to day, um, and how you can you know really develop empathy for other people around you, um, because I think that's one of the greatest gifts that uh, books can can give us. So it was lovely reading with you, um, and I hope that you enjoy the rest of the book. Thank you.